everybody. Hi, um, hands up. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea how to do a Facebook Live. Um, but, I, you know, I, it could take me forever to figure out how to do it perfectly. So I just decided that while the kitchen's getting finished and the office is getting finished and the tech's getting sorted out, I'm, um, I'm just going to wing it and I'm just going to do these and they're rough and ready. And I hope you have at least a good laugh. So, um, and these are just going to be short and quick as I think of things. So yesterday I posted a video of churning ice cream because I thought it would be helpful. People seem to be struggling with um, knowing how long to churn, what, when, when you should stop churning. And so I posted a video and I hoped that it would help, but there, I thought about it overnight and I, I suddenly realized that maybe the reason that some of you are struggling with getting the, the frozen ice cream on the sides and the bottom of your churner is because you're going on time. You might be um, looking at the manufacturer's instruction booklet that came with your churner or the KitchenAid or whatever it is you're using and you might be reading the generic instructions which say churn for, I don't know, whatever it is, 20 minutes or 25 minutes. And so you're doing that rather than learning how to gauge when it's ready by looking at it. And so if you're just going, oh, it needs to be done for 25 minutes and you're setting a time for 25 minutes and then going away and, and when the churner ping, when the timer pings, you're coming back and saying, okay, it's done now. And you're finding that the, the sides and the top are frozen. That's the problem. So you don't want to go by time. What I do is you, you, you learn what it looks like when it's churned enough. And so I hope the video that I posted yesterday helps you. If you didn't see it, um, do a search in the Facebook group. Um, I can't remember. I think I tagged it, but I can't remember with what. But it, it's a video of me churning ice cream. But another tip that might help you, and if you can't find that video, then what I do is I, once I start the churner, I put the, the, the timer on for 15 minutes. Then I go away, do something else. When the timer goes off for 15 minutes, I'll come and look at it. And, and you'll get to know whether it's still got a ways to go or whether it's not. So they do generally take around 20 to 25 minutes. But the reason you can't go just on time is because there's lots of variables. The churning time is going to vary based on the ambient temperature of your kitchen or wherever you're churning. If it's 95 degrees out, it's probably going to take longer to churn because the ambient temperature is warmer. So you might be churning for 35 or 40 minutes if it's hot. I do recommend that you plan your churning to the cooler parts of the day if you live somewhere hot. So first thing in the morning or last thing at night when the ambient temperature of your kitchen is, is less. Because the goal is to get your ice cream churned as quickly as possible. The longer it churns, the more air you get into it and the chances are that you will have bigger ice crystals, which will mean that your texture is not as good. So that's why I recommend you churn when it's cooler in the morning, first thing in the morning, last thing at night, so you get churned quicker. So ambient temperature can affect the amount of time it takes to churn. Um, also, how cold your, your bowl is. Also, how cold your custard is. Um, also, the volume, if you have less custard, it's going to churn quicker than a full batch. So there's lots of variables, which means that the churning time is going to vary. 
So that's why if you just look at the manufacturer's instructions and go, it says 25 minutes, put a timer on, do it for 25 minutes, it's very possible that you're going to overchurn it. And when you overchurn it, that's when you're going to get the hard frozen ice cream on the sides and the bottom that some of you are finding it so hard that you can't get it off. So I think that's the problem that you're going on time rather than, than look or feel. So check out the video that I did yesterday so that you can get an eyeball on, on what the side would look like and what the consistency is like when I turned it off. Um, set a timer for 15 minutes, go back and look at it at that time. The goal is to churn as quickly as possible. So everything should be really cold. The custard should be really, really, really chilled. Don't overfill your churner because that will make it take longer. Try and churn in the coolest part of the day so it churns faster. Those are just some tips and tricks, but do it on learn to do it on site, not on time, because the time will vary. So, oh, I see. I'm getting lots of comments over here, which I'm ignoring because I have no idea what I'm doing. So, hi, Jennifer. Thank you for thinking I'm wonderful. I'm feeling like a complete clown right now. Um, hi, Sherry. I love my cabinets too. Um, as you can see, I've got I, I've got books down here. It's meant to be full of um, glassware and dishes, which is all my. Uh, these aren't ones I use day to day. These are the dishes and glassware that I use for props when I'm shooting the photographs for the blog or for the cookbooks. That's why I have so many. Um, but right now, so Adam still needs to paint. We have to have another coat of paint in here. And so I haven't finished putting everything away yet because I'm just going to have to move it all. Um, the, the, that's, oh no, which way am I there? That's, oh, there's Daisy. You can see Daisy there. That's Daisy. And then if you look over there, that little orange thing at Zebedee there sitting on the little couch. So, um, I'm not sure where Mr. McHenry is. He's not under there. So I, he often sits under the desk, but he's not under there anyway. So, um, Sherry, 15-ish minutes. Yep. So you probably live somewhere warmer if you're churning that fast or either that, sorry, somewhere cooler or you're doing it at a cool time of day. So good for you. That That's a good thing. Um, yay, Felicia, you did your first. And I think I remember from the group, you did butter pecan and it was your first. So I hope you just have the best uh, treat when you get to eat it. Um, Ruth, hi, looking forward to seeing you at KetoCon in a couple of weeks, 20 minutes, that's 20, 25 minutes. Oh, the other thing is if you have the older, if you have the Cuisinart uh, ICE 20, which is what is the machine that, or the machines, some of the machines that I have, the ICE 21, which replaced the IC 20, that the ICE 21 will churn faster. So if you're if you have an IC 20 and you're going, mine never churn in 15 to 20 minutes. They always take 25 to 30 minutes. Why? That's why. It does also depend. All churners are not the same. So the IC 21, the newer model, was engineered to churn faster. Um, so if you have the older one, the ICE 20s, which is what I actually have, I have four and they're brilliant. So I, I, there's no need to upgrade. I just know that they take longer to churn than the, the newer model. So Sherry, that might also be why if you have an IC 21, if you have the later model, you're, that's probably why you're churning faster. Um, thank you, Doug. I still feel like a clown, but thank you for thinking it looks great. Pam, Pamela, thank you for loving my cookbooks. Um, I, oh, <laughs> Ruth, you love my cats. They're, uh, they're not looking very interested right now, are they? So it's nap time, nap time at the Brown House. Melissa, um, I'm not sure I love doing Facebook Live because I feel kind of crazy because I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, um, I love my new kitchen too. Um, and actually, it's not finished and there's trim to be done, but I did get my fantastic new lights put in at the weekend and they're the best thing ever. I had them custom made. They don't have bulbs in, but maybe if I turn my laptop around, you can see 
then I don't know if you can see them hanging up there. They are industrial uh, kitchen whisks that I had custom made into lights. There's two over the continent and there's one over the kitchen sink. And um, I had those actually, Bob, Bob the Spark came on Sunday and installed those for me and I absolutely love them. So I'll do close up pictures of them when, um, when I've got bulbs in them so you can see how cool they are. Um, Vivian, oh, Vivian, methylated bee. I, I'm so happy if that's working for you that just, I, I don't want to cry on my first Facebook Live, so I'm going to move on now. KitchenAid chandeliers, yes, Doug, that's, uh, yeah, KitchenAid chandeliers. I just love them. They also remind me of the time I spent at uh, South Bank University when I was doing um, all the, uh, when I was at the National Bakery School, of course, I spent all day playing with uh, whisks, industrial whisks like that. So uh, it also makes me remember my time at the university and that was great too um all right i hope that's helped i'm feeling marginally less ridiculous now um mostly because you're all cheering from the sidelines and i really appreciate that so i hope this has been helpful i'm gonna do them regularly um i'm also gonna get more professional i'm gonna get the the awesome Chris Duckett, who uh, does produces all the podcasts for the Keith Evangelist group, um, he we're getting me a microphone so the sound will be better, and um, we're gonna we're gonna do it better. But anyway, I hope that this this has helped with the mechanics of ice cream making. Everybody's getting into ice cream mode, so I hope this has helped. And just bear with me while I brush up my Facebook live skills, which are currently zero. So uh, happy Tuesday. I don't know about the rest of you uh, folks who had a whole day yesterday. It feels like Monday. It's actually Tuesday. And now I am going to head off to the tile store because Adam um, needs me to go pick tiles so that we can get the kitchen finished. So um, thanks for stopping by. It was, uh, it was lovely to to interact with you all in this way. Now go and churn some ice cream. See ya.